What is good? We are on to round two of our rookie wide receiver profiles. If you missed it, last week we kicked off with Jalen Waddell. Uh, so be sure you don't do that again and hit that subscribe button. Maybe hit that little bell, get the notification. So that all comes to your little fingertips or right to your little pocket so you can just stay on top of these. And it isn't just wide receivers. We'll be doing tight ends, mostly just Kyle Pitts and uh, running backs as well. Be He's a wide receiver, isn't he? He's whatever the hell he wants to be. Uh, he's a wide receiver, too, in this class. That guy's just a mismatch nightmare. Anyway, we are not talking about Kyle Pitts tonight. Tonight, we are talking about Rashad Bateman. Batman. <laughs> Dude, if you just took the E Batman. out of his name, Batman. it'd be Batman. How fucking awesome would that be? I and Batman. he's kind of like Batman. All right, let's settle this. To- in your opinion... No, I think we need to leave that to the uh, to the comp at the end. We'll 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 see if he's like Batman. Okay. <laughs> do you think Batman's a superhero? Uh, I, I do know. not. That's like asking me if a hot dog's a sandwich. He does not have any superpowers. <laughs> so anyway, Rashad Bateman is six two, maybe six two. There's some six ones Could out be there. Six one. Six two two ten. Twenty one years old. They tell me he'll turn twenty two in November. Um, he's from Tift County High School in Tifton, Georgia. Four star recruit, four of them, one, two, three, four, according to multiple recruiting websites. A strong to very strong high school basketball player, had offers from Penn State and Virginia Tech. Football was his main love, but you you know people love the basketball stats, so you're bound to hear that on a broadcast, especially if he's any good. But you can definitely see him be putting those basketball skills to good use because he is a bit of a zone crusher. Oh, a fresh pop to get rolling here. All right. I like it. Um, so Minnesota was the first offer that he had, um, but he was a little bit of a late, a late bloomer. as a direct quote from his high school coach. So when he did blossom, he started to get uh, recruiting letters from Tennessee, Georgia, Texas A&M, some bigger names coming to calling, but Bateman stuck to his guns holstered them and then uh you know said, oh no big schools this was the this was the first first people that came a call and they wanted me so i'm gonna stick to them stick stuck to his guns he committed. made a commitment to them honor the commitment that's what he's gonna do he's gonna honor the commitment um and that's the kind of dude rashad bateman is like that uh, so, so i love that uh, he probably should have gone to one of those bigger schools but the dominant, right but we'll, we'll get to it at the same time, I want to give a shout out to whoever the hell's bringing in the wide receivers at Minnesota because that man deserves some love, a raise, a different job. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but he brought in Tyler Johnson, who, if you're not familiar with it, plays for the Bucks, made some great catches at different uh, times throughout the year. You should probably go try to acquire him cheap in Dynasty. Uh, now you have Bateman, who we're going to be discussing right now uh, in duration. Uh, and then they have another receiver, Altman Bell, who looks like he's going to be no slouch either. And I don't believe he's eligible until next year. I'm saying that, you know, all those guys are good. But PFS had those as in 2019, two of the top 15 PFF wide receiver grades with Johnson at two and Bateman at 14. So who's ever crushing the wide receiver scouting department over there? Hats off to you, my friend. Uh, so let's jump into the Bateman stats and metrics, a little different than the Waddle stats and metrics, starting with Big the college time. dominator and breakout age. The college dominator is 43.7% at 88th percentile, and the breakout age is 18.9, 94th percentile. He all right. All the boxes with authority. <laughs> Video's I mean, over. We can stop right there. Case closed. Open and case. Open and shut case, Johnson. <laughs> Um, but it seems like much like with Jalen Waddle, where it was the reverse and not good, you know, we kind of have to go, we got to, got to press on Celine Dion Wood, her heart. She's going to keep going forward. Her heart will go on. So we're going to keep going on. The only reason I see to, to go on any further, oh, because, because this is a done deal with the college dominator and breakout age where it is, except that. Nikhil Harry had pretty much the same exact dominator in breakout age, which actually Nikhil Harry's breakout age was a one percentile higher, ninety five percent. So he's better. So if if does that mean that Bateman's not as good as Harry? Because that would be a huge bummer. 
Well, the jury is still out on Nikhil Harry, although them boys are been gone I'm on vacation. Doesn't doesn't ha- the optics the haven't looked super great that maybe he's playing the wrong position and should be playing tight end because the separation has not looked great. Um, but Bateman, I, I think, looks like a, a whole different prospect here. Uh, we've talked about it before. There's not going to be any uh, actual NFL combine, but recently Bateman was clocked at four, at a four three nine, uh, which you know I think there's going to be a lot of uh, selling wolf tickets or telling stories or uh, a lot of you know you don't really know who to believe what to what to what to grab onto. Um, so I, I think that the, the number is probably a little off. There's a lot of people saying add you know a tenth or you know point one five to those actual numbers, which regardless is, is good for Bateman. Cause I think there was some people thinking more, maybe more along the lines of a mid four or five. I, I thought he would probably be a high four, four. Uh, so either way, this is probably going to, this is, this bodes fairly well for him, but you're just not going to know what numbers to really buy into uh, moving forward. But it's, it's at least a decent baseline. You're going to see a group of guys. I think this was the exos or I don't know how to, uh, there was a, there's a group of players in there with Jamar chases and a bunch of good guys who were all training. So there'll be, uh, I think Tylen Wallace also just ran a really fast time. So that raised some eyebrows as well. Um, he's definitely the top five best wide receivers in this class. Tylon, Tylon, Tylon. <laughs> <laughs> Not really though. Uh, who likes let's, Tylon, but let's move So on. let's, let's get onto the counting stats. So in 2018, uh, there was 13 games. Bateman saw 96 targets, 51 receptions, 704 yards and six touchdowns, 3.8 yards per reception, 346. Oh, you left me hanging. I thought you were going to hit me with a yak. Uh, <laughs> 6.8 uh, yak per reception, 6.8 yards yak per reception. Uh, then he has an AVT, which is avoided tackles per reception per PFF uh, at 10. And that had him tied for 47th for reference uh, to kind of where that 10 stands. Uh, he was at a 7.2 slot percentage in 2018, 7.4 targets per game. Um, and they did credit him with eight drops in 2018, which, you know, with 90 targets that puts him tied with eighth in drop percentage at 13.6. So that's not my favorite thing. 2019, uh, 13 games, 95 targets, 60 receptions, 1219 yards, 11 touchdowns, uh, 20.3 yards per reception. So a nice jump up there. Um, 367, Yak. There it is. 6.1 yak per reception. Uh, the AVT that year is he had 17 uh, avoided tackles uh, after reception. Uh, so players with at least 90 targets, if you hit that little uh, filter, uh, that ranks him 12th and he had 17. Uh, and yards per route run, he was 3.48. That's good for eighth in the nation. Uh, 7.3 targets per game. So around the same as 2018 slot percentage moves up a little bit here, uh, but Tyler Johnson still in the fold 12.8 in 2019. And he has five more drops. So cleans it up a little bit, cleans up that drop rate. some 51st uh, that's where he was ranked at, at 7.7%. Um, so then, you know, they have a change in Minnesota. The offense is doing really well um, in 2018, 2019, Kirk, you want to help me out here? Shiraka. Uh, that's the OC. He moves on to Penn State. Kind of a lateral move, a little bit of, I guess it's just a bigger school, so more notoriety. Uh, Mike Sanford takes over in, in 2020. Tyler Johnson also leaves the program, goes to the pros uh, from 19 to 20. Um, and you see Bateman's slot percentage start to jump up a ton in 2020. Um, and what this offense was, there, there's still RPOs working in the PJ Flex system here. Uh, but there was, it was just, you know, what you watch with Bateman, if you can get some all 22s, this is RPOs, which is the whole offense, but there's a lot of like slant and in breaking routes time and time again. You know, I got a bunch of timestamps of just him saying, Oh, RPO to a slant or, a, a, you know, a post or some sort of slant in breaking route where, you know, he's doing a lot of damage and a lot of offense kind of runs through that kind of stuff. So 2020, like we mentioned, that slot percentage jumps all the way up to 61%. So you see a complete fundamental change of where Bateman is lining up on the field. Now he only plays five games and he does, if you're looking for him, he changes his number from 13 to zero. Um, do you have some why, details why on that? the zero? I'm just asking you, what do you know about the zero? 
Well, I mean, anybody that changes their number to zero, aside from maybe Gilbert Arenas, has a good reason for it. <laughs> uh, Gilbert being the <laughs> the uh, outlier there. Yeah. Uh, but no, he changed his number, so he he de- he he decommitted or didn't you know decide to come back for this last year because the Big Ten wasn't going to play. And then all of a sudden everybody else is doing it. So the big 10 was like, ah, well, let's go ahead and squeeze five games in here. And Bateman's like, well, my team's going to play. I want to play. I want to come back with these guys, but I'm going to change my number um, because he's, he's an activist and he wanted to, you know, basically the zero represented zero tolerance. And so he wanted to use his platform to draw attention to that and, and to, to, you know, boost that up, which kudos to him for, for doing something like that. And I think, yeah, I think he should speak it out and, and stick it to his guns on the uh, on the commitment. Two good uh, character check marks here for old Rashad Bateman. So like you mentioned, five games, 55 targets, 33 receptions, 427 yards, two touchdowns, 13.1 receptions per game. Uh, back near that 2008 total in that one. 13.1 big... yards per reception. Sorry about that. Uh, back to the 2018 total. So that that 20.3, uh, which was super strong in, in 2019, moves back down. Probably maybe because he's a little bit more in the slot here. 109, 192. Uh, yak. <laughs> 5.3. Yak. After reception or per reception. Sorry. And the AVT down to nine. Avoided uh, tackle per reception. And again, he only played five games. So nine's pretty good in that arena there maybe also helping him with the slot percentage of catching more balls over the middle of the field and uh, having more opportunities to easily break more tackles Um, yards per route run 15th in the nation, but only played five games and yards per target um, 11 there. So a big jump up in uh, yards per target there. Again, that slot percentage jumps up to 61% and the six drops again. So that drop rate increases again to 14.3% tying him for 15th worst in the nation and only playing five games. Uh, not good. Uh, so that wraps up the numbers, uh, straight counting stats and metrics portion of this event. Now let's bring to the film side and kind of what he does outside of those numbers and brings to on the field. So kind of as we mentioned there and as we saw from those percentages of where he plays, he can play inside and out and be effective. Um, I like him more as an outside player, but the fact that he's 6'2 and 210 and can operate out of the slot effectively tells me how smooth of a mover Bateman or Batman is. Um, He has physicality to his game as well, whether it's right off the ball uh, or throughout the route at the catch point. Uh, he, he, He that shows up you know, a good bit on film. Uh, But then he also has some nuance in his route route running where, you know, he uses good body lean uh, to get defenders to kind of open up their hips and kind of turn the wrong way to, you know, create separation for himself. He also has some big time catches, which is, you know, I'm sure you've seen him by now. Uh, Wins a lot of 50 50 balls reeling in those circus catches. He's pretty good after the catch. Uh, He has enough speed to break big plays when he can take those, you know, slants that we were talking about and in breaking routes to the house. Um, I don't think he's a burner, but I certainly think he has enough juice. He's not crazy fast. The 439 would suggest something a little different, but that's not necessarily what you see on the field, but it's still pretty good on the field. Handful of times, though, what I really did like is I saw him work off script with the quarterback when he was in trouble to kind of, hey, the quarterback's rolling around, was looking for something that wasn't there. Now the quarterback's rolling the other way. Bateman notices, this, has the awareness to break off of what he's doing and work with his quarterback, which is going to be huge at the next level because everything doesn't always go as planned and you can become a quarterback's best friend when you're doing those things and really helping the quarterback out in those situations. But then you go back to me to those those pesky drops. Um, so that that does sting a bit, but it wasn't something that I necessarily like. It was kind of mind boggling when I saw the stats uh, for from PFF from all the drops because it, it didn't necessarily wasn't something that was standing out to me. Is that is that something that 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 you noticed, Jay Wayne? Yeah, I mean, there, there's times when you're watching the contested catches and you see the strong hands secure that catch and, and, and take on defenders swatting at it and not not have a problem with it. And you'd think, oh, man, that, he just showed really good hands there, really strong hands, especially like securing the catch. And then you see some pretty poor games from him in terms of drops. Like he had one game versus Iowa. He had four drops in that one game. Like, I that think was it's in 2020? Just a, I or? think that... Uh, 
Yeah, that was in 2020 because he would only had two in the rest of those five games mm. if you take out the Iowa game. Um, yeah, but maybe, I don't know what's maybe, going on with the drops. Maybe his, maybe his gal broke his heart the night before, you know? Maybe he got a little too tuned up the night before. Some, you know? some little Philly broke your heart. Ah, no, I was a girl. She broke up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a couple other things that I saw, like he, he does have a little bit of a weird wide stance pre snaps, which causes him to have a little bit of a false false step yeah, when he yeah. gets going a little a little hitch in the giddy up, if you will. Yeah, uh, but, mean, it, but, the stance but it doesn't looks, really go ahead. The, the stance looks cool. You know, he looks all like stealth, but then he has to he has to bring that back leg up a little bit to start the play. Yeah, he's got to take like that that false step, like I well, said. But it doesn't I think it was really... Michael Gallup that had that that issue too, or or. <sighs> yeah, I can't re- really remember, but I do recall talking about it. But it, it doesn't really seem to affect him getting off the ball or create separation, and he seems to get up to speed plenty fast, um, and doesn't really lose his speed when he's making those cuts. So just something that I noticed. Um, so I, you know, what do you, uh, what do you, you got anything else from kind of the film side of things, Jay Wayne? I agree with a lot of things you said. There's definitely a lot to like about Bateman. You know, he can make those circus catches. And 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 one thing that, I, that did surprise me is, you know, I, I got a whole, I started watching all 22s after I had gone through the regular tape that you can just like watch. And, and it's, those are just so hard to see what's going on. So he, when you get the all 22s, one thing that really surprised me was the speed. I didn't think he had, he doesn't have super crazy top end speed, but he's mm-hmm. consistently getting behind defenses. And I think that go route is one of his best routes and he wins on that consistently. And whether it's just yeah, a that double move nine, is lethal too. Right. And if he hits you with the double move um, that it, he was, he was really working people over with that and, and getting behind defenses. Um, uh, he's a really good ball tracker when it's in the air. I think he's, like you said at the beginning of the show, phenomenal against zone defenses, just had a good feel for when to break a route off or when to, to just sit. And and he was on the same page with his quarterback. You noticed that that continuity they had together. Um, I do think for me anyway, I, I do question his ability against man coverage. Um, sometimes, not always, but there are times where certain corners would get kind of physical with him, get close to him, not necessarily jam him, but press him. And he was, having difficulty getting off of those guys. Um, and I know that's a typical concern with most wide receivers coming to the NFL is can they get off press coverage? Um, and, and that is definitely one of my concerns with him. I don't think it's insurmountable. Like I said, it's, it's a typical concern. And then one of the reasons why I held back a little bit on giving you the, the yak is because I don't know that what I saw on film is quite as good as what those numbers on paper look like. Um, especially watching those all 22s. They're, they're better teams that he's playing against in those games. But it didn't seem like he was like the most elusive guy after the catch, uh, whereas no, Waddle he, was averaging yeah, 9.8 well, yards. Sure. After the, the, those catch. are kind of two different play styles where Bateman, I think, uses more physicality after the catch and isn't necessarily the most elusive player in general. I think he right. plays a little bit more to his physicality sure. in and, general and, when you watch him. But he does is, have... There is plenty. No, no, not by any means. And and there is plenty of yak to see, especially in the highlight tape. And then you look down and it's Georgia Southern or South Dakota State or Illinois or, you know, just just some bad teams where he's yakking up these extra yards. And so I just don't know if the yak numbers on paper match the elusiveness that I saw on the field. Um, So that's just another small concern. But I mean, this guy is a really solid all around player. He can take the top off because he can win down the field. Even if he isn't super, super fast, he does sustain his speed well. And there's plenty of opportunity, plenty mm-hmm. of examples of him getting behind, behind defenses. And, you know, he's going to be liked. He's going to be sought after because of the metrics. And I think he's a really safe bet. And I can't really yeah. find too many huge issues with him. But it's just, I'm not as excited about him as I was mm-hmm. with Waddle. Um and this is as far as we've gotten in this process. So, yeah, well, for me, you know, Bateman really does check a lot of analytical boxes or check a lot of boxes in general uh, from an analytical and a film standpoint. Um, when you have a player like that, he's going to be a hot commodity, you know, maybe not as hot as a commodity for Jay Wayne over there, um, but it, he's going to be a hot commodity in your rookie drafts. And, and I'm fine with that. He is a guy that I'll be able to click the draft button with on draft day and not feel sweaty about it. Like sometimes you get in those positions where you, you you know, you get a little sweaty when you're clicking that button to say, but I just feel like with Bateman, you're really not fucking it up 
by taking sure. Rashad Bateman. Um, and I'm, I wouldn't get sweaty about it, but I also just don't get giddy about it either. I'm yeah. not just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have him on my squad. Yeah, I, I maybe think that's wrong. Maybe, maybe you know, while he doesn't maybe possess a bunch of elite traits necessarily. I think his floor is super strong and sturdy. He's got a good concrete uh, foundation and there's a good craftsman building that floor. So you're never not worried about that thing. And then the ceiling is, is very high to me. Like I think uh, you know, the, 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 the floor is sturdy. And then the ceiling is like a, you know, a big cathedral ceiling with tons of headroom where you're never, you know, you know, you're not worried about anything. I think there's a big ceiling with Bateman. Will he get there? I don't know, but I think that's the part that makes me feel good is that how good I feel is like he can be baseline. And then I feel like there is a good, a really strong top end of that. That could be uh, for Rashad Bateman. Yeah. So I, you- I, I get, I get that sort of, I mean, I don't know how much of a ceiling Batman has, you know, it's not Superman ceiling because he doesn't have a superpower, but if you're in trouble and you need help and Batman shows up to help, you're pretty stoked about that. So I mean, in this country, money is definitely a superpower. So fair enough. Fair enough. That, that the ceiling is Wayne Manor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the floor is the bat cave. It's almost impenetrable. Right. Right. <laughs> Just don't be scared of bats. You're fine. Oh, uh, so currently, I've seen a lot of bigger guys draft boards in the first round that don't have Bateman on it. Um, I've seen some talk of the Ravens maybe taking him a little later or some of those teams that do pick later in the draft, maybe him popping up. Um, so I think that's always good for a skill position guy when you can get on some. Maybe there's some of those later round teams that you know are already pretty good. Uh, so that's usually pretty solid. Like Nikhil uh, Harry. For, well, <laughs> that, that, that was pretty much the worst possible landing spot, really. Um, in the end. So, but th- that can help expedite skill positions, startability when you get on those later back end teams. And I think from all the things that I'm, I'm excited about and that I mentioned, I think that he, he's going to be one of those guys that, you know, he, he does kind of eventually check all those boxes, but he may not be super sexy in general and not, you know, garner a whole lot of attention. He's just that, you know, what was that movie with Freddie Prince Jr. where, where she's, all, she's that? all that where where she he took her from, you <laughs> took know, her just kind of being, off yeah, she was, not, not that she was hot all of a sudden. <laughs> like, you know, you got to it takes a little while for everyone to figure it out. But I think he could be somebody who really gains steam later as this thing goes on. And that's usually the position you want to be in. You know, it's, it's obviously this year we have a Trevor Lawrence, but it's never that first quarterback you want to be that they're talking about. It's that quarterback that's two weeks before the draft. You're starting to hear a lot of talk about so i think bateman could easily end up in the first round if not uh i think some people will be moving up to grab him in the second round who need help um and don't need to uh, necessarily a guy that they feel like they got to wait on and develop because i think he's ready to go all right well um we hate well, comps but should we do them anyway well i don't really have a comp <laughs> for this guy but I, I wanted to run through some comps that i saw for other people because I again not huge comp guys but i did i read a bunch of stuff about him and i saw one guy who had kind of tiered uh comps and i thought tiered one of them comps. that's next which, level which is this i, I and i wish i, I should have wrote his name down my bad on that one i i usually do if i'm going to use some anything that anybody else said uh, but marvin jones was a guy who popped up as like a low tier comp for this guy after i read his article and i thought that was i thought that was pretty uh i like that a lot because you know yeah i, I think that's they, i think that's a perfect bateman comp and that's kind of where i feel about the floor i feel like Mar- marvin jones is good again not sexy people can hate on him because he's got the glasses on and he might wear overalls from time to time to school and is into art. Uh, but, uh, you know, but Marvin Jones does nothing but be your wide receiver too, when he's healthy, uh, and in his, in a decent situation. Uh, so I I, I like that. He also plays faster than he is. I thought I would have thought that his Marvin Jones is a four, four guy. So it's pretty good. I think it's a high four, four, but it might even be four five. I, I'll, no, I'll I'm, I'm, I'm going four four seven. All right. Well, please continue um, with the comps. Yeah. So then, all, basically, the other ones that you see out there are Keenan Allen, Allen Robinson, uh, and Michael Thomas. And you know, Keenan Allen's a third round player drafted in the actual NFL draft, seventy sixth overall. Uh, Allen Robinson. Second round guy, 61st overall. Mike Thomas, second round guy, 47th overall. So all these guys sound a little bit familiar of maybe where Bateman ends up being selected, number one. And number two, they're all kind of like Rashad Bateman, whereas 
none of those guys necessarily possess any crazy skill that you're like, Oh my God, this guy's this crazy. Like, I think you could have put any of those guys in Michael Thomas's situation and he would have done, they would have done exactly what Michael Thomas does. Keenan Allen is perennially fucking awesome and just stays getting hated on. And Allen Robinson's, you know, done nothing but be really strong with basically no wide receiver one. Right. With no quarterback help throughout his entire career. And with, they're all very similar builds to Rashad Bateman. You know, I think Allen Robinson's the biggest out of those dudes. Uh, but, you know, the 6'2", 2'10", 2'15", uh, kind of range. And I think Marvin Jones is somewhere around there as well. Uh, so, yeah, Marvin's 6'2". He he, uh, he ran 4'4", four, four, like so you're right. 4'4", four, 6'? Four, yep. Uh, I said 4'4", four, 7'. Four, um, you said 4'4", so I was, was going to get it I, I feel like... Um, I feel like all those guys really fit into that mold of, you know, I'm sure somebody could be like, well, oh, this guy has this elite trait and Michael Thomas has this like, all right, maybe, maybe Michael so, Thomas but, probably didn't have those many drops in college, but no, but they were all kind of, you know, maybe not the sexiest guy available, but turned into being, you know, I'm pretty sure the Jaguars drafted uh, who's the dude from USC Marquise Lee over Allen Robinson. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I felt like those were, between the three of those guys were, were, were good kind of comparable fellas to kind of Bateman's game and what he does. And that, you know, maybe that he man. doesn't possess that necessarily overall elite traits that maybe super duper stick out to you, but uh, can all produce at a really high level uh, without those. So um, anyway, you got anything to add to that? No, nah, do you want to get into the, uh, the current yeah. fantasy sitch? Sure. So DLF ADP right now is seventh in rookies. Um, and then the DLF rank is through their, you know, expert rankers or whatever is uh, eighth. So um, Waddle, Moore, Pitts, and then on top of those guys is the usual cast of characters. Your Harris's ETNs, Jamar Chase, Miss Javante uh, above them. So that's, where he ends up there and uh you know i guess i guess i'm okay with that i i'm undecided I, I would i would take bateman over rondell moore currently right now right this second um and i would i'm i'm up in the air whether or not it's whether or not i would take waddle they're just different players um i think that i want bateman waddle. Feels safe but waddle feels more fun Waddle's definitely um, more fun. So is more. Uh, we ha- I haven't gone through all- take pits over him right now. I haven't gone through the all 22s for, for more yet. Um, so I don't know that I, I can't for certain say that I want to take more over Bateman. I definitely want to take Waddle over Bateman and pits. I mean, Oof, definitely you need taking to- Waddle over Bateman, huh? Yeah. Let me get Waddle. He's going to be a first round draft capital. Well, he's too, he's too old and his metrics are terrible. So. Hmm. opposite guy for you. Nobody's going to like that, but yeah, let me get Waddle. (laughs) Well, we'll get further and further into those conversations as we get further and further down the line. So again, be sure to subscribe, uh, like, and comment below, whether you agree or disagree. If you're listening on iTunes, hit us up with a review. Uh, We really appreciate all that stuff that keeps us going. That really helps us out. All of those things really help us out. Um, And again, uh, we'll be doing mocks as after we get past the rookie season. So that'll, you know, rook specifically rookie ones and then startup ones. So that'll again, ha- bring up arguments of, you know, who we're taking over who. So hit that subscribe button, baby, and help us out. Uh, appreciate y'all listening to us and we'll catch you next time. Peace.